when this passes town meeting. Well, that's the no election. election. I would the love money, to see this bill pass. The money is in. There is three. There is one hundred and fifty thousand dollars to look at reuse of the batch as uh, school administration and town hall or school administration alone. Removal of the nineteen forty nine new addition to the building, uh, and what we will do with that building. We can't give you a cost until we know what's going to go in it. So that's part of, of this oh. piece going to town meeting. But <clears throat> also going back to the batch, I'm one of those along with Steve that's lived here all my life. And I would never want to see that building torn down. It's very significant to me, as it is significant to some people who've just moved here. The town did go through a period where they just ripped buildings down. And well, as Howard said, would I say keep everything? No, you can't keep everything. But with what <coughs> Geno's is on 28, there was a very old, you know, stately home that had Rufus Porter murals all through the home. One of my best friends in high school lived there. I didn't even know what I was looking at. And then the wrecking ball came, and Papa Geno's is there. As far as renovation of that building, the difference in cost of renovating it as a school, it's 16 classrooms, which doesn't meet the educational needs of the town, is far greater than renovating that building as office space. Educational specifications for schools require classrooms to be of a certain square footage. Offices, All right, I, I yeah. agree we should not renovate that for a school. No, but offices, but offices can be of different varying shapes and sizes. You don't have to go in and say the, the office of, you know, a secretary or a clerk or whatever area needs to be X square feet. Things can be moved around. So the, the difference in cost per square foot to renovate uh, is, is huge. Significantly different. The other thing, though, just an answer to your question as far as, you know, what number were we talking about? Because with each scenario that we presented, and, and again, this is part of what we're presenting for the October town meeting and uh, the November uh, debt exclusion vote, included in that, again, these schematic designs where we do have some numbers and an idea. But again, we're no, we don't have the comfort level of saying, let's go for the whole, you know, $42 million and say that we can do that because we know that the renovation of the bachelor school for whatever use it's going to be, if, if it's not going to be a school, we're looking at you know, if this is all approved, we're looking at three years down the road, and the costs that we have today could be and probably will be significantly different than what they're going to be three years from now. And we want to make sure that as we move towards that date, we have uh, the most current numbers. What we're looking at, and for the, for the most expensive proposition, which would be school administration and town hall use, is approximately $4.4 million at today's dollars. $4.4 million. So we're going to make the best? For usage as school administration and town hall. Now, the other thing is, is if we don't move town hall and we remove the annex, you can, you know, cut that down by 40% probably, uh, and then still retain that portion of, of the bachelor school for school administration and additional meeting space. Uh, those numbers we have from the architects, we have studies dating back almost 10 years on the reuse of the bachelor school and the renovation of those numbers. Uh, we have been studying the use and reuse of our facilities for years. I mean, uh, I was moderator in 1973 to 1984, and we were talking about some of this stuff. You know, I was on the board back in 1988, and we still have it. And what's the date on that particular? This one's, only, this one's only two years old. Right. And, that's, and then we have an updated one, which is again from a 1991 and 92 study, uh, looking at the same scenario, same thing. So the numbers that we have and, and what we're looking to do with these particular facilities, are, we have an idea. And giving them back to the architect, say, you know, put it into today's dollars, what it's going to look at. That's why we have the $4.4 million, the numbers that Mr. Jones presented to you as far as the, the impact of, of uh, moving forward with this whole package, that's included in there. Um, so again, we're not looking to, you know, uh, misrepresent anything as far as the numbers and what the impact is going to be. And again, those are the worst case scenarios based on today's dollars if we move forward with that entire plan. Again, in this particular facility, the reuse of the bachelor school was, uh, it's got two options associated with it. But I, I can understand and, and we're sympathetic to it, you know, why don't we just bulldoze, it'd be easier, be cheaper, and start with a new building, it might be cheaper to, to construct something new. But we do have the historic district consideration. We do have um, 
people who live in the community a significant amount of time who, who want to retain that. We have people who have just moved to this community because of the small town flavor that that common and historic district area offers. And again, is directly reflected along with a lot of other things like you know your scores, your MCAS scores, and things like that as to your property value. But you start leveling some of these buildings in the around that uh, that small district. I, I would venture to say that it, it may have an I'm adverse. Not Right, and again, we looked at that too as far as putting the burden on someone else and selling it to them. We talked about assisted living, which would be a good use for the property. We talked about it for commercial use, and we said, you know, what is the cost of doing this and associated with it, and what is the effect on the neighborhood and on the, the center of town? Commercial industrial stuff, people went, we don't think so. Uh, assisted living, we said, yes, that's not, not a bad idea. We had some numbers run and put together by some uh, reputable people. And you look at the numbers, and from a cost-effective standpoint, from an investment standpoint, the numbers just don't work because the cost of renovating and having to deal with the Historic District Commission and retaining certain facades and looks, and again, what the, the impact of, of the area would be, again, adds to the cost of the, of the renovations. So the, the, the thing of selling it off to someone else and putting a burden, a burden on them with some constraints by us would be uh, very costly, and at this particular juncture, a, a wise and prudent investor wouldn't do it. So with I would, and one thing that we wanted to avoid, and we are going to avoid at all costs, and none of this calls for it, is that building will not lie dormant, it will not be boarded up, it will not be vacant, it's going to be put to use, it will be renovated, and it's going to be uh, enhance the charm of our, of our local historic district area. Uh, Mr. Pasquale. I got a, got a couple of questions, and I got a couple of feedback to a couple of slides. And then I have a major concern that I'd like to just express now. Uh, my first one has to do with the slide on public safety. And I think the most important sentence that should have been put in there was omitted because when I took the tour and I stood there and had Lieutenant Nolan and the Chief of Police and I said, quote, are we out of any regulations? And the answer was, we're not meeting the codes of some federal specifications. That's, a pro that's, a, that's the prime reason we ought to be doing something to the police station. We're out, of, we're, out of, we're out of compliance with federal laws. So put it down. The second one was on the Murphy School needs. I guess I'm going to tell you where I'm coming from. Um, we own a lot of property in Ipswich River Park that I walk in those sheds. I knew before Mr. Nolan was going to take care of his ambulance, I asked why the hell it was over there in a couple of police cars. We own all the buildings. Now, the Ipswich River Park is under a grant that says you build anything that's exclusive to everybody. So what I'm looking at in my vision is not the Murphy School, is to develop the property over where all those buildings are as a community center, a cultural center, because where the senior citizens want to be is close by the kids, and where the kids want to be is close to the playgrounds, and where the cultural people want to be is near the libraries and near the schools. So it doesn't make a sense to me to use the Murphy School for all these things. And I went to meetings here, at public meetings, where I went to the library, and we had these brainstorming sessions. And if I didn't hear anything, it was, you know, what are we doing for the community? And that's, that's, that's something that I think we ought to explore before we talk about the Murphy School for all these complexes. The other thing is, the Murphy School is built like a horseshoe. So us Italians, we fill the sucking thing in the middle and we go up with it. So you can put a lot of stuff over there, okay? Yes. I'd, like, I'd like to address this one from the selectors meeting to forewarn people. Now, I always call him Dr. Jones to get away from talking to his son. Doctor, when you stated the things about the taxes, on the television the other night, Mr. Simmons was talking about reevaluating the town, like it's going to be like 3% over the next, and we don't want to give it to them all at once, we want to give it to an increment. A lot of fine discussions, Steve steered the discussion very well. Well then I say to you, if we know that data, then those tax numbers better update to this inflationary factor that's going to happen to these people. Because what you've said, somebody running around with a 106 factor, and now Mr. Pasquale saying, those things are going to have to get bumped up. Who will want the people? You understand what I'm saying? 
I understand. Perfect. Okay. Would you well, like to understand what I said? Yeah, I understand. What you, but you said it's up today, you know, and I've seen. Well, what you said. All right. Okay. okay. If we can address it, I just. Okay, let me just take you as an order here. Okay. okay. In relation to the police station and out of compliance, and I think we can call on uh, either Ed Barletta, who's uh, chairman of the uh, police station building committee, or Lieutenant Nolan, who's also here. As far as, uh, and again, anybody who's seen the uh, the tape of the last FUP meeting uh, that we had, where we took the tour of the bachelor's school and the police station, uh, you know, I hope they gave you a pretty good idea as to what we're facing in that, particularly in the police station, in that facility, as far as the the space. Constraints and again being out of compliance. Again, they can they can address that. And it will be added to the slide. Thank you. Well, yeah. but, uh, I don't think Mr. Pasquale would be on it. We do mention that, but what are we going to do? Brag to some lawyer that we're out of compliance so that if a prisoner should get hurt, he sues us for our whole town. Yes. But it was evident. Right, but it's true. But it was evident. It was evident even by it was evident by the by the. Uh, the, just the people standing there in the lobby and in the foyer area, how close it was, again, to the 911 uh, system, how close it was, if there was a, a, some sort of an occurrence where a police officer had to bring someone into custody, uh, you know, they had to come right through in front of the public. And again, that is a very unsafe situation. It does create uh, some serious liability for the community. Um, and again, whatever the plan is for, for the new police station, that's addressed. You know, the, the, the people who are taken into custody will be taken into a secured area, aside and, and out of sight and, and out of range from the, um, the general public and also from any of the, uh, the sensitive equipment uh, which is maintained in, in the current system. And, and again, uh, right now, that current facility uh, fall, falls flat in its face when it comes to uh, minimal standards that, that should be met. Uh, and you're right, that should be highlighted. Uh, we hope that the tape uh, helped do that and, and again, as Mr. Balletta put in, he'll highlight that in the presentation. John, yes. I'd just like to express my concern. It's twofold. It's the warrant. The warrant relative to this gigantic need. So here's what Mr. Pasquale says. And you can read like I read. There's 33 articles. One article alone is taking up 17 pages. Could we just focus on, on I want to tell you the most important on? article the most important article <coughs> is why 90% of the town is going to be there is article on this scene. 17. Say it out loud. 17. 17. Article 17. So 17 is going to have a hell of a lot of discussion. And there's a few other articles in there that has to do with money that I always interested in. But nobody cares about changing the bylaw and this and that, da, 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 da. Well, excuse me. I'm, I'm directing this now to Mr. Solomon. I've gone to a lot of town meetings, and I'll be the first one to stand up that I get phone calls afterwards from people saying, why the hell would you sit down and shut your mouth? Why did you use charged words in public? Why do you do this? Why do you do that? I don't know who this other group is. I'm telling you, I don't know who they are. But I'm intelligent enough to know, having gone to several of the pump meetings, and I admire all of you for all the time you put in an aggravation, but you're not inclusive, one key element of this town. It's independent persons called the taxpayers. They're the ones, so they're not on there. So you got this body. Hold on, wait a minute. But you remember, you got a label on your head, you remember the funk right now. Okay, still write the chest. Okay, all right. still have to write the chest. Sure, you, you got to write, the, I understand that. Now, the word I want you to, I want, the word I want you to focus on, see, when I told the fire chief he was buying a toy, that was a charged word. You just use the charged word that's on the television. Don't use the word ambush, because they heard it. What you're doing is you're gonna have divisive people come in there, I'm just telling you. Look at, be open. Listen to them. I don't know why they're not here, they ought to be here. Because but this is going to be, a, it's going to be a long, drawn-out affair. That's what my I, I think, is. Actually, I don't know the, dis the discussion of how many is going to take that long, because I think people who are going there will have their minds made up, and I don't think anybody's going to say, hey, you make a presentation to me, let me know what we're going to do. My, I'll my, make up my mind that night. My, my last but question please. happens to be, repeat that school number again. You said 11? 11, 11,973,000. Okay. Now, I keep hearing this $80,000. Now it's is it in there? It's $105,000 included in that, but it's not something to reimburse. Oh, excuse me. Excuse me. Wait a minute. Let's get seriously. I don't want to hear this funny stuff at town meeting. What? So don't embarrass Steve. I just asked my number. I want to know 